Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So uh, it's springtime, and uh, I know that some of us are planning and looking forward for the summertime. Some of us will go to Florida, maybe Virginia, do some fishing. <laughs> so whenever you go to with your paradise, just remember us, okay? <laughs> Praise God. And I would like to uh, thank uh, our friends uh, for seeing them here today. Praise God. Thank you for visiting us. <laughs> and also the family. Amen. So if you have your Bibles with you, we'll be... Uh, we have finished already our four series, four part series of keeping the faith in the ever changing world. And we have closed our series by discussing the foundation of our faith, and that is uh, the Bible and uh, the Word of God. And this morning, I would like to start again a series talking about more than conquerors. This is a part one. And uh, the title is The Making of the Conqueror. More Than Conquerors, Part 1, The Making of the Conqueror. Actually, uh, on your program, we have three questions over there. If you want to have a Bible study, a cell group uh, with your family, uh, or maybe a cell group over here, as we study the Word every Sunday, those questions will guide you through in asking questions and so that not only on Sundays that we could discuss what we have studied, but also in our devotion, in our cell groups and Bible studies. Okay, so keep your uh, program. So, give pong pambalot ng mga tuyuyan. Yan po ay pinaghirapan ng ating pong uh, mga programmer. Praise God. So, uh, at the back of it, you will see the three questions. And uh, there's part in the middle of the program to put all your outlines as we discuss our topic. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. It says here, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you Lord for bringing us today, this is not an accident, O oh Father, for us to be here. We are here, O oh God, it is not by force, it is not because this is an obligation or responsibility. Lord, we are here because this is our choice. To be here to love you, be here to give you thanks and praise, O oh God. Be here, O oh Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, I thank you, God, because you're blessing flows in our lives oh god thank you father because you are so wonderful and so amazing your work so oh father could not be comprehended your work so oh father is so wonderful thank you lord lord may you open our hearts and our mind today as we study your word this we pray in jesus name amen more than conquerors part one the making of the conqueror Actually, the conqueror are also victorious. Conqueror, they're also warriors. Even though that we are warriors or you are warrior, you could still experience defeat. It is not a, a guarantee that if you are a warrior, you could be a victorious. There are a lot of warriors that always experience defeat by the enemy. But a conqueror, it's not only a warrior, but it's more than a warrior. Because a conqueror always experiences what? Victory. He's not only a warrior, but he's a conqueror. He always wins the battle. Now that's what we'll be talking about. Because in Romans, actually, in Romans chapter 8, Paul discusses not only a warrior, not only a conqueror, but he said that we are what? More than conquerors. Imagine that. You're already a winner by fact. But the good thing is this, you are more than a conqueror. Now we have to discuss why is that? 
A lot of Christians today actually don't understand it. This just past week, I have heard the news, and I'm grieving with Rick Warren knowing that the son committed suicide. And it was actually a, a blow in, in, in the ministry life of Rick Warren. Imagine that he wrote the uh, a book that is a multi multi million sales, and he actually have taken a lot of financial benefits out of the book. He discusses about the purpose driven actually on on the story of Manny Pacquiao. When I was watching this his movie actually portrayed by. Uh, who's this uh, guy who's handsome like me uh, <laughs> in the Philippines? He, 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 he got born again. Actually, he, he was ushered into believing in the Lord by reading the Purpose Driven. And uh, I was also reading a, an article with this guy. He was uh, at the court and uh, he was uh, charged of a crime. And during, during the hearing time, he you know, he struggled with one of the guard, one of the police guard inside the court, and he managed to took the gun, and uh, he went outside, and the police were chasing him, and so he entered into this house, and uh, he hostage a family. A mother was there, and also a daughter. So happened that this woman is a born-again Christian, and she was reading a Purpose Freeman book. While the hostage taking was happening and the hostage drama was happening, this woman was discussing and sharing to this guy the purpose driven. And suddenly, he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. And so what happened? The purpose driven book was again become so famous. People around the world were asking, why is that that the son of this pastor committed suicide? Actually, there was this story and uh, going around in some questions, especially in the right side of the evangelical faith, majority of them, they're Baptists. Actually, Rick Warren is a Baptist preacher. And uh, they were asking that, uh, is the son uh, will go to heaven because of the, you know, uh, because of suicide. Some of them says that he will go to heaven. Because he has this uh, chemical imbalance since birth. And so this is a disease actually that keeps on creeping into the mind of this son uh, about suicidal tendency. And so he could not take it one day and he took a gun and shot himself. And uh, if you will ask me if that is a disease, actually it's just like a cancer. And so for me, for me, if that is the case, it will go to heaven because it's a, it's a disease actually. But there are a lot of people today, they could not conquer and overcome and get overcome of the situation and the circumstances of life. It is because they are not conquerors. I had this friend, actually, uh, one of the superintendents in our apartment, we have two buildings over there, two Hanover and four Hanover. And he was actually discussing and he was struggling if he will go full time in the ministry. Because he's doing, he's working as a uh, superintendent in the building. They have a good building, actually. And he was reading his Bible. His uh, building, his floor is in the first floor. And it's a window over there. It's glass. And he was reading the Word of God. And he was meditating. And he was struggling. Lord, shall I, should I go full-time, Lord? Should I go full-time? Or because I have a house that I have to pay mortgage. And suddenly, there is this one man at the 14th floor fell in front of him that and died. <laughs> Just like that. And he was so shocked. He was even, you know, he was, he had a trauma in that incident. Imagine that. On his, in front of him, a man died. And he said, this is the kind of life that God has given you. And suddenly it will be gone. And so you know what happened today? He's ready full time in the ministry. Now, there are a lot of questions. Why? What, what are the things that we have to conquer? If we are a warrior, then what are the things that we have to conquer in this life? Not a lot. Circumstances maybe in our lives. 
A lot of us decided to go into this marriage life. And as we go to, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend, they're, we have a good relationship, actually. The first time, it's, it's, it's a honeymoon. Uh, the faces of those boyfriend and girlfriend, they, they, they're just superficial when we have this kind of relationship. You will know them the moment you will share the house with them. <laughs> and you will realize that I had this regrets of my life getting and having this man and a woman to be with me for life. And you have to conquer that. Some of them realizes that, no, 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 I'm out of here. This is not my life. I'm out of here. Now, you're planning to have a baby. Then you, you, you have a baby. The problem is that the, uh, the, your situation financially, you don't have that enough. And so you work so hard, you don't have any time. And you said, I don't like this life anymore. And your kids are growing up, become so rebellious because you don't have time with them. As they grow up and they said, I don't care. I don't want this kind of life. And because you are working so hard you and you acquire this cancer. Circumstances in life that, that, that for us, we don't deserve these things. It's out of our control. How are we going to conquer these kind of circumstances? A lot of Christians today, they're just good. When things are good and fine and smooth sailing. But what if this life will give us and offer us in the side of those things that we don't want. And it shambles our comfort zone. A lot of us, we go to Canada. We came here in Canada for what? Ministry? <laughs> we all came here because of what? That's right. And now we realize that when we have this money, it's not the, the, the real deal. Because a lot of people here, they work so hard to have the money. At the end of it, at the peak of that, they are not happy. And they, they realize, no, oh, it's God. It's God. It's God. And the problem is this. A lot of people, a lot of migrant people coming in from different countries, they believe that Canada will be the answers to their, to their uh, longing and their desires. When they came here, that's where the time that the relationship break down. Kids go crazy and go wild. And they realize, sa mabuti pa sa Pilipinas, kahit talbos sa kamote, pag uwi, pag, paglabas mo ng bahay, nakangiti ka. Ang asawa mo, nakikita mo yung kamay, talagang masaya. And you will say that, no, even though in the Philippines we don't have any money, we just, you know, eat bagoong. We, we eat this, uh, this, uh, that, tuldok, kuit, at disabog, you know, disabog. <laughs> the tuldok is the bagoong, you have to that, that, and uh, get the rice, right? The bagoong na is that, you have to kalawit that, you have to eat that, right? Disabog is the asin, the salt. We don't, if you don't have any dishes or meat or fish, you just have to, you know, fry the rice and sabog das in, the soup. That's it. But you're happy, right? <laughs> A lot of people actually realize this, that they have to conquer life. I've been here in Canada since 2004. My family came over uh, 2010. And we've been through a lot of tough times. It's so hard. Imagine dividing yourselves with, with different kinds of aspects of your life, being a husband and the father in the family. And uh, as a worker, actually, in the company, and also as a pastor in the church, because you're doing your job. It's so hard. But you have to be a conqueror, not only a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. Now, the question is this. How God is making us 
into a conqueror. I, I want to give you three things today. It says here in chapter 8, verse 28, For and we know that in all things God works for good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Just one verse. Number one, we know, for we know God. That's number one. The word here, Paul says, and we know. What's the meaning of that? No, it means oida. That's perfect tense. That's that's absolute aido. It means this is refers to the knowledge which comes from one's state of being, intuitive knowledge. This is this is the, the word that, that says that you are sure of it. Oida means absolute positive knowledge which one has beyond a doubt. You know, intuitive. You feel it. You know it. It will happen. That is the word, oida in Greek word, we know. When Paul says we know, that's absolute. As if that there's this weather forecaster that says, today, sunset will happen at 5.45, but don't worry. Tomorrow morning, the sun will rise up. It will sure. Yeah, it's sure, right? Even though you don't like it, the sun will go out tomorrow. You're sure with it. That's we know. That's the word we know. This important. This is really an important thing for us to have this power and ability to know. You know why? A lot of people today, they are so upright and they had a lot of doubts. Even Christians, we are also swayed by this kind of principles and thinking. Here in Canada, you have a lot of insurances. You have all heap already, but you have medical insurance, dental insurance, and you have life insurance. And the agent will come to you, you know what? Life insurance is not enough. You have to get a rider. What's the rider? For example, if there's an accident and you didn't die, you just lose your one, one, one hand, 5,000, one feet, 10,000, that's a rider. Imagine that you're listening to this agent as if you are chop chopping, being chop chop by right. <laughs> These are the things if you don't have this ability to know, being sure, you will become a person that has a lot of doubts, a lot of fears and anxiety. Those people who don't have any status and papers here yet in Canada, you had a lot of fears. I know that. I've been there. When your work permit goes into this expiration, you'll be, you know, you are already rattled and say, oh, I have to 60, 60 days, I have to renew my... And once your, 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 your renew, renewal form is already at Begridale in Alberta, you will be praying, Lord, Give wisdom to that officer, Lord, right? You had this a lot of anxiety. I know that. I was given 50 days to leave Canada when I was here in 2005. And I don't know what to do, too. And now you are applying for your permanent residency with your family, and you know that the policy, we discussed that yesterday, we had this. Uh, free legal counseling actually with uh, with all of the nannies if you don't know actually if you have four kids or two kids and a husband if you are applying already for permanent residency if your husband become inadmissible because of crime he is a criminal he has some charges you become an inadmissible too you have to go home if your husband has a TV or AIDS, even though you work so hard here in Canada as an nanny, and during the, these, these medical uh, tests, they realize that your husband has TV or cancer, you become inadmissible too. Yes. That's a law. And if you are here in Canada and you become so in love in one of the refugees, status and you the refugee boyfriend or girlfriend will say you know what you're going to become a permanent resident because we have we are common law already so put me in my in your 
uh, in your application as a common law, don't do it because on the law, in immigration law, you will be disqualified. You will be go. You will be going home. I wish you were here yesterday. <laughs> we had a lot of information actually. We had a lot of information. <laughs> And so during that process, actually during the process, you're having some problem with your employers. And so you know, I cannot be, I, 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 I can't have this, this is status of permanent residency. You're so rattled, and so anxiety, you have so, you're so anxious about these things, right? How will you be able to overcome this? By saying, Lord, I know, I know it. There's something always best for me, Lord. If this is not Canada, then, sakana <laughs> daw. I have to go home and sakana na. <laughs> For I know, Lord. Now, why we know? It refers to that which is the common knowledge of the Christian, as settled into winning knowledge, which the Holy Spirit makes real. I'll give you an example of this. If you are a husband and a wife, and through the years, you have, you have developed this trust already, your relationship, and you have this 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 kind of, of relationship that is uh, you have a deep uh, sympathy or uh, affection with each other. Even the footsteps of your husband when he's coming home, you know it already that he's there, right? When he knocks at the door, you know it. You feel it that your husband is there now coming, right? This is intuition. The same thing with God. A lot of Christians today, they are so doubtful. You know why? Because this we know, this oida, don't have that kind of relationship with God. God himself has placed the knowledge of, you, of this verse in our hearts. And it says there, the believers know the following truth intuitively. And we have to always fully understand this truth that we know. Now, the question is, is, why we know? We know for we know God. If you have a friend actually is so faithful to you, and suddenly there is bad news that says, you know what? Your good friend is destroying your reputation. And you will say, no, 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 no. I don't believe that because he can't do it to me. Right? Because you know that person. But if you don't know that person, that's a problem. I say, oh, baka nga. Oo nga. Kasi nung minsan, yun lang hiyan na talaga ako nun eh. Right? But if you know that person, if you know God, then you know. There's some people actually, how do you know? Because I know. How do you know? I know. Huh. Because some people want something, some evidences, right? This knowing, this intuitive knowing actually gives you the freedom to do things. And whatever happens in your life, you know, because you know that you will be in the same kind of God. We, we, when we were planting this church, I don't know where to go to. There's six people, seven people that uh, we have in the apartment. They don't know, actually. Uh, uh, how how and where are we going after that actually during the time i was helping three churches and so after the the lunch time i have to leave and these guys they have to take pictures pictures and you know in the facebook they have to go to the mall yeah, just like that that's the ministry after cooking eating have some fellowship then tawana ha, ha, ha. after that no, that's 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 a, that's a thing but we know if we will be doing this ministry seriously, seriously for God, and we know that this ministry will bear fruits because Amen. we know God. That's the, what the Bible says that upon this rock I will build my church that even the gates of Hades will not prevail Amen. against it. And we know that word. Amen. I don't care what the people will say about me, about some of us, about this ministry, because we know, and we know God, and we have to move on. Amen. Last week, too, I was given a, uh, an information that Joel Austin left the faith. 
And uh, somebody, I, I even posted that for two minutes in the Facebook saying uh, that we have to pray and we have to write. And even texted you guys about praying this, right? And suddenly there's some information that feeds in on me that this is a fake. It's a hoax. Somebody created a website so similar with Joel Austin. And, uh, and they even created a, a, a YouTube video about this information. And uh, I was even, you know, anxious also during the time that after Rick Warren's son and after, and after this, Joel Austin, this is a big blow in the Christian community. And thank God Joel Austin says, said something about this word. And he said, no, I'm not leaving the faith. He had a, he had a lot of issues actually. He, he, he is not that strong, actually, when, you know, not like uh, John MacArthur or people like, you know, in the U.S. But he's a Christian. He's, he's a brother. He's a pastor. A lot of, a lot of lives being touched by his ministry. And who could, who, who we are to judge him, right? We just have to pray. And so if we are a conqueror, the first thing that we have to know is to know. Because we know our God. His word is trustworthy that guarantees his promise. Indeed, his character rests upon it. We know because we know him, according to this author. We know not by looking at the events of our life, but by knowing our God. Some people, you know what? They are they were looking into the events of their lives by, 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 by knowing God. We know not by studying the pattern of the cloth, but knowing the designer of the fabric. We know it not by listening to the notes of the symphony, but by knowing the composer of the music. Praise God. There are so many things we don't know. We don't know why babies die, according to this author says, or why cars wreck, or why planes crash, or families wake up, or why good people get sick and suddenly die. But this we know. God is at work, and he has not forgotten us. Because we know. It says here, and we know, secondly, in the making of a conqueror, we know that in all things, God works for our good. We just don't know it, for we know God. We know that God will work all things for our good. That's in verse 28. All things means good and bad, bright and dark, sweet and bitter, easy and hard, happy and sad, prosperity and poverty, health and sickness, calm and storm, comfort and suffering, life and death. That's the all. Now the question is this, Oh, Pastor, niluloko mo naman ako. Pati ba naman sa, sa, sa kahirapan eh, kasama ang all things. Hindi ba pwede puro yaman-yaman naman? <coughs> Iba pwedeng saya-saya na lang, uh, you know, all things always happy, always prosperous, always raising of the salary, always promotion, you know, no recession. That's all things. The word work together, this is from the Greek word soon or synergio, which speaks of intimacy. Ergon, it means, ergon, it means work. Actually, in English word, the word work together is the word synergy. Synergy. The potential ability of individual or organization or groups to be more successful or productive as the result of a merger. Some of the companies going broke and so they want to merge with a big company and when they merge together they establish a better and a founded and established business right that is synergy but i'm always saying to us pity you are if you don't experience in your life poverty you know why because never in your life you will enjoy prosperity. The only time that you will realize and you will enjoy prosperity when God leads you to go through poverty. And it gives you this understanding that I am so blessed. Thank you, Lord. 
We were together with Pastor Joven 2006, 2017, right? The family, we're not here yet during that time, and we go through a lot of tough times. During Friday, we meet at the square one. We are like gypsies. <laughs> we have this big bag. In our bag, we have that shoes, our this dress, you know, and uh, our Bibles. Uh, we have the, our towels already, everything on it. And uh, because our uh, standby time, our uh, standby place is uh, was in Starbucks. Wow, Starbucks, right? <laughs> Starbucks. Imagine that one one glass, three fifty. <laughs> but after that, we're already counting our coins. <laughs> We know that all things God works for good. And now we realize, actually, when I was driving from work, going home, we said, Lord, thank you, Lord. Now I've been, I am I'm, I'm with my family. I'm working with this company. Before, I'm just a pastor. You know, here in Canada, just a pastor. As if I'm begging for money. To put food on the table. God bless you all. <laughs> yeah. And thank God. And thankful to God. He said, Lord, put me in the right people. So that we could establish a church. And one day we'll become full time in the ministry. We'll be taking care of the people. And I'm so thankful. Lord, so I, I'm telling I'm telling the Lord. Actually, I, I, I even, you know, almost cry when I'm driving. Sir, because during that time, winter time. Me and Pastor Joben, we had to track the our way home for the winter time. The this the you know snow is so strong, but we have to go home because the Starbucks will close. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going home to meet uh, uh, Milton during that time, and he has to go to Scarborough. I'm still thinking of those things, and God is really good, and I'm enjoying my life today because you know what. All things work for good. The good thing is this, you know, God makes you humble because you've started in a humble beginning and you know that God work it out for good. It means to be fellow worker and to and so to cooperate. God is our fellow worker who himself, the one working in our behalf and causing all things to work together for good. Good means agathos. This means beneficial, profitable, or useful. Even though you are going through tough times, you don't know what to do, but you know, just, just hang on there because God is just working out good things for you. I've been through this paperwork with immigration, etc., etc., during that time. When I was changing my status from visitors into ministers, I had to pay three thousand five hundred with the lawyer, just to know that the lawyer had forgotten to sign and to put his license on my paper, and so my paper has to go back to me with the deportation fifty days to leave Canada. <laughs> I was so mad during that time. I went and rushed into the lawyer, and the lawyer was in the Philippines. Thank God because he had his associate actually. My 50 days is already gone by two days. Just today, we passed our paper, my paper, to Alberta. And I praise God for that. You know what? Because it gives me the wisdom and it gives me the desire to know the process. I studied it. And so right now, I am a little lawyer, immigration lawyer. A lot of people asking me. It's a good thing, you know what? Because there are a lot of pastors. Last time, last year, one of my friends coming from the Philippines, I was the one who facilitated the papers. Everything. And for ministers' visa, Pastor Joben knows that. Eight months to one year is the processing paper. But that pastor, just two months and three months, he has gotten his minister's visa. <laughs> If we don't know that, actually, during that time, we said, Lord, why is that that this is happening to me? 
But just enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride, brothers and sisters, because God is just working out things. And it says here that in all things, God works for good of those who love Him. The word love here is not just a love. This love refers to the agape kind of love. Agapao means to love unconditionally. Sacrificial love, alternate love, describes the love which God himself is. The love of God. If you don't have this kind of love, then you will not understand that these all things will work for you. You know why? Because some of the love that we have understood and understand is this. The taking kind of love. If you love me, you shouldn't be like that. You don't shout at me because you love me, right? <laughs> if you love me, you always give me peace and a hug and a flower, right? <laughs> this kind of love is you love that person, whatever that person is. Because you love it, it's your choice to love that person. My wife always asks me, I always ask him to ask her too. Do you love me? Why do you love me? You know the right answer to that? Because I love you. <laughs> because when your wife or your boyfriend and girlfriend try to detail those things, then he or she just love you because of those details. If somebody asks you, do you love me? Why do you love me? Because I love you. It's my choice to love you. Whatever you are, whatever you are, and whatever you will become one day, I will still love you. And so this kind of love, the word here that for those who love him, who love God, that's the reason why you realize even though you're going through bad times, you will say, Lord, I know you love me and I love you, Lord. You will never let me into this danger zone. You're always there. Your hand will always be there. That's the kind of love. Agapao is not sentimental or emotional love, but it represents obedience as the act of one's will. This is the only place in Romans where Paul wrote of the believer's love for God. Everywhere else he referred to God's love for the believer. You know, one Christmas in 1818, Joseph Moore, the biker of the church in, uh, in Europe, he wrote a, a song, a Christmas song. What happened is that when he gave this to his uh, pianist, the piano was broken. And so the church that he was pastoring during that time, he was, uh, the, the, the church that he was ministering during that time was in the province. And so what happened is that he just sang it with, with a guitar. And you know what happened? Uh, this priest said, uh, says to uh, this instrumentalist, I want our piano fixed. And so he, he, he went into this, uh, this city and tried to hire some, piece, some one, one guy to come over and fix the piano. And so while they were playing this, this song, suddenly Franz Gruber, the, 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 you know, the, the repairman for the piano, heard this song and says, wow, this is a beautiful song. And so he wrote that song and he memorized the melody. Then when he went and he go back to, to, uh, to the city in Austria, he let his daughter sing it in their church, in school, in everywhere. And so it was so famous that until now we are singing it. It is the, the song that says Silent Night. Just started. It was and it will not become famous if the piano did broke. We know that all things God work for good. A great composer Ludwig van Beethoven in 1717-1827. He was a writer already, a composer, but the doctor told him because he has a problem of, of the hearing of deafness. And the doctor says, I could not cure you. And one day, you will really lose your hearing. You will become deaf, totally deaf. And he was struggling during that time. And suddenly, one day, suddenly, everything is silent. Could not hear any, any 
and he he is he was a composer actually he's composing songs but you know according to the history that with all destruction shut off melodies flooded on him as fast as his pen could write them down. His deafness becomes a great access. Actually, according to history, he has to, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, lie down on the floor, lie down on the floor and uh, put his, his face on the floor so that he could just feel the vibration of the piano when, when he's playing it just to feel the sound because he could not hear it. And there was also a story that when he wrote already this, his great composition, and he was conducting it in the full harmony of art or orchestra, actually, and he was, he was really so passionate. He was doing this uh, 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 conducting, and he did realize that the, 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 the material is already done, and he was still doing like this because he could not hear it. But most of his work, we could still play it and hear it today. And he said, if I did not become deaf, I can't, and I did not, and I could not create those, those compositions in life. All things work for good for those. And lastly, it says here, those who love him will have been called according to his purpose. Not only that we know, for we know God, not only we know that God in all things, God works for our good. Number three, we know that God called us according to his purpose. The word, the called, kletos, which means invited or welcome and was originally used to designate those invited to a banquet. We are called, we, are, we were invited by God according to his purpose. A lot of people today, you know why? They become not a warrior, not a conqueror, because they are so boastful. These people in the church that will always say, you know what? If I will be God in that church, that church will collapse. Who are you? The word called here is God was the one originally gives the invitation it is not you it is our privilege to say yes lord thank you god for inviting me we are called by god and it is not because of our purpose we are called according to his purpose i'm dreaming you know what when brother eddie went here in canada i even though i'm tired from work i told my wife let's go to that meeting because, you know, in the Philippines, you can't even be near to that person. I want to shake the hands of that person, right? So I went there. A lot of people want to be near to that person, even wants to, to join him in some of his ministries, right? These are just people. But for God, we know that God called us according to his purpose. And his purpose his, 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 his purpose in our lives are, is, is the, the highest purpose that we could ever have in this life. problema, mga kapatid, yung purpose pa rin natin ang ating pinaninindigan. Our purpose will always, we are always pushing our own purpose in this life. Alam niyo, mga kapatid, if you will just enjoy and you understand the privilege of being called by God according to His purpose, you will never and never miss every opportunity of doing the ministry for God. Amen. If Harper will call you and say, you know what, I need somebody, an aide, I want you to join me. Somebody, you know, you know, uh, what, you know what will happen? You will drop down whatever job that you have just to be with Harper. I was in SM during that time. Uh, with my family, you know, in SM, in SM City, in, in West, a lot of people there. It's, I think, almost December 25. It was December, a lot of people. And so I told my wife, I'll well, just go there. i just go somewhere else and we'll just meet up. And when we were meeting up, actually, uh, those people that are facing with me, it was looking to me, all of them. Hi. <laughs> As if I am so, you know, I'm, I'm so proud. All oh, the people are you know, looking at me. 
And I didn't realize that Yolo Pascual was at the back of me. And I thought that I was the one being stared upon by these people. Even my wife, I thought that my wife is looking at me. But they're looking with Yolo Pascual. <laughs> Just with that kind of, you know, a glitch of at least, you know, fame. It's, I was already, you know, flattered already, right? What about with God? We're called by God according to His purpose. I will not be lonely. I will not be tired doing the purpose of God. It's my privilege. And I thank God for all of you here. Though you're tired, Friday night you have to be here. Sister Marie and some of you guys, you have to kalabkad. You're dragging that, that thing to go to Beatras to buy food so that you could cook. Even though you're tired. Because you're doing the purpose of God. You're called to do this. So by whatever time so you come, we... We, we fight with our husband and our wife. It's Saturday night. We have to go to the church, right? And preach. <laughs> and do the ministry. Anong kinalaman ni Lord doon? Yung iba sa atin, ayaw kong mawag sa simbahan na sinagawa tayo. Yung kinalaman ni Lord. Pag-bowling kayo ni Lord, bisan nyo. <laughs> Kaya yung dalawa nag-awa, hindi si Lord, di ba? God has nothing to do with the fight, right? Why not go to church? It happens to us in the Philippines when we were planting a church. Actually, we always fight in my life. It's a happy family. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and because it's it's a church planting, she will do the praise and worship, and I'll do the preaching, right? And because women do the a lot of crying. <laughs> and so what happened? She was leading the praise and worship with the sunglass inside the church. <laughs> But we have to do this because of the privilege of his purpose. I've been there in, in this company and working with. Binalaguong nila ko sa trabaho. Put so much work on me. The boss was so happy with me because I, I did my job so quickly. And they didn't realize that I was studying my preaching for the Sunday, that's the reason why when somebody called me to do something, I want it done quickly because I have to go back again to the computer and do my research, right? <laughs> they don't know that. But they put a lot of work and a lot of work with me. Imagine that three businesses at G, they're putting it into my plate. One business, the, the capital with uh, the corporate with 350 users, the G Lighting with 150 users, the WCS Capital, with uh, 170 users, imagine those people with BPs on it, vice presidents, and uh, a lot of things to study, a lot of things to memorize, because when they call you, they will expect that you will deliver the solution, right? And I'm going home from Monday to Friday, I don't know what to do anymore. And during Sundays, I don't want to come here grumpy. <laughs> Because I am already stressed out of the work. My wife gets it all. <laughs> it's a privilege, actually. The word purpose, pro, before, for, tetemi, place, means it's to plan in advance and comes to mean that which is planned or purpose in advance. It means for the purpose of God. There's something happening with us, whether that's bad things or new things in the sight of those people. But God's purpose, it has some plan in advance that these things will work it out for good. This is the making of a conqueror. We are not just a warrior. We are an overcomer. But in every situation of our lives, we will overcome. Because we know. And we know that God worked all things for good. And we know that God called us according to his purpose. There's this passage in the Bible, Genesis chapter 15, verse 20. Joseph said, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. You thrown me into this pit, sold me into this 
uh, Midianites and become slaves in prison in Egypt. But, praise God, God meant it for good. I've just waited for time. Before I could not understand, I am having this dream that I'll become one of the top in the brothers. Become jealous on me. I could not understand. I'm still dreaming of it when I was on the pit, when I was sold a slave, when I was in prison. But right now, now I understand. God meant it for good. Professor E.C. Caldwell, he was a professor in a, in, in, in a seminary in a Bible school. Last time of his teaching to his, his students, he said, tomorrow, tomorrow, he said, this class of seminary students, I will be teaching on Romans chapter 8, he said. Tomorrow I'll be teaching on Romans chapter 8. So tonight, that's what he said, so tonight as you study, pay special attention to verse 28. Notice what this bears truly says. And what it doesn't say, that's what he said to his student. Then he added one final word before he, I, I dismiss you. He said, whatever happens in all the years to come, remember Romans 8.28 will always hold true. When he said, he said that, when he went home, the same day, Dr. Caldwell and his wife met with tragic car train accident. The wife died, killed instantly, and he was crippled permanently. This is a true story. Months later after recovery, he has to go back in a seminary and teach. When he entered the room, because that was the last word, right? Remember Romans 8. All of the students were so silent. And you know what he said? The first word he said, Romans 8.28, he said, he still holds true. He was on his wheelchair during that time. And he said, one day we shall see God's good, even in this situation. I would like to conclude by reading this paragraph. Somebody wrote this and he said, did you ever hear of a man who got his health by being sick? Have you heard that? Did you ever hear a man of a man who got his help of being sick? And he said, that is a Christian. That during in the bed, you know, in, 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 this, in the bed, uh, he was bedridden and sick. And maybe the doctor would tell him that he will die in a few weeks time. But he realizes, Lord, you healed me. Because there are some things that I could not understand when I was healthy. But right now, Lord, you healed me. My emotions, my everything. So that's Christian. And he said, he gets rich by his losses. He rises by his falls. He goes on by his push. He goes on by being pushed back. He lives by dying. He grows by being the menace. He becomes full of being emptied. Well, if the bad things work him so much good, what must his best things do? If I can sing in a dungeon, how sweetly will he sing in heaven? That's a Christian. That's the making of a conqueror. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord. We are more than conquerors, oh Father. There will be a lot of trials and difficulties along the way in this life as a father, as a mother, as a wife, as a husband, as, as a child, as children, as a pastor, as a worker, as an employee or an employer. Lord, there are a lot of tough time comes. But you have said in your word, oh Father, that all things will work for good. Some of these bad things, oh Father, right now we could not understand and we could not comprehend what this, why are these things happening to us. But one day, oh Father, we will know that all things work for good because we love you. Those painful words that we have heard, those traumatic experiences, those abandonment, those broken relationships, 
those humble beginnings, those loneliness, those worries, oh God. Oh Father, one day we will realize that these things, oh God, will work out for good. Because you called us for your only purpose. Lord, I pray with my brothers and sisters right now. I don't know what they're going through right now. I don't know, Lord. Maybe they're having some bad dreams and nightmares at night. Maybe there are some things that they don't want to even think about it. And they want to go back on that because they're, uh, they had this bad experience already. Lord, we are more than conquerors. We are not afraid to go back in that situation or not. Because we welcome them all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You will pour out the 